In addition, that shekel from Tyre had a picture of a pagan deity on one side of the coin. And an inscription on the other side of the coin that said Tyre is the holy city. And of course, to the Jews, Jerusalem is the holy city. And, and again, this is a this is a religious tax. This isn't something that the Roman government is imposing upon the Jewish people. The religious establishment in Jerusalem, they didn't care that the coin from Tyre had a pagan deity on one side and an, an inscription on the other side that was an affront to their holy city, Jerusalem. The shekel from Tyre had more silver in it. That's all that they cared about. And so this, this is just an example of, of the corruption of the religious leadership in Jerusalem in the time of Jesus. And so you can imagine if you're a Jewish person, especially if you're a devout Jewish person, uh, the temple tax was, was not very popular for the Jewish people. Paying this temple tax bugged a lot of the Jewish people. And using a shekel from Tyre with a pagan deity and this inscription about Tyre being the holy city. That bugged people. Much like today. A lot of people don't like paying money to the government or paying their taxes, especially if they think the government is corrupt. And if you're visiting today and you work for the IRS, <laughs> let me just say to you, welcome. We're glad you're here. <laughs> Jesus loves you and he has a wonderful plan for your life. Please have a cup of complimentary coffee on your way out. So again, look at verse 24. Those who received the temple tax, they came to Peter and said, does your teacher not pay the temple tax? This was a controversial thing. Some Jews, like the Essenes, said, we're not paying that. And refused to pay it. So it was a controversial thing. And Peter said, yes, of, you know, of course he does. Peter probably should have checked with Jesus first. Instead of answering for him. Now watch what happens in verse 25. And when he had come into the house, so he goes back home, his own home. Jesus is living there. Jesus anticipated him saying, what do you think, Simon? <laughs> From whom do the kings of the earth take customs or taxes from their sons or from strangers? And Peter said to him, well, from strangers. And Jesus said to him, well, then the sons are free. And here he's talking about earthly kings. Uh, earthly kings taxed their subjects that lived in their kingdom, but they didn't tax their own children. They wouldn't tax their own sons or their own daughters. And I'll show you an example of this in the scriptures. If you want to turn with me back to 1 Samuel chapter 17, keeping your finger here in Matthew, but in 1 Samuel 17, a very well-known story that probably most of us, or if not all of us, know. Here is the story of David and Goliath. 1 Samuel 17, verse 19. 1 Samuel 17, 19. It says, Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. So David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper, and took the things and went as Jesse had commanded him, his father. He was to bring supplies to his brothers that were with Saul's army and check on them. And he came to the camp as the army was going out to the fight and shouting for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had drawn up in battle array, army against army. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army and came and greeted his brothers. Then as he talked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines 
and he spoke according to the same words. So David heard them. So Goliath would go out every day, challenge the Philistine army or challenge the Israeli army to send out their best man. Giant against giant. Now, who was the giant for Israel? Saul. Remember, Saul was head and shoulders above everybody else in Israel. Saul is Israel's giant. But he's afraid. Remember they, when they appointed Saul to be king, they said, our king will go out and fight for us. Well, here you go. Now you're on the battlefield and their king is afraid to go out and fight. And so verse 24, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. So the men of Israel, look at verse 25, said, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel, and it shall be that the man who kills him, the king, will enrich with great riches, will give him his daughter to marry, and give his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. There you go. There it is. The king has offered anybody who's willing to go out and fight against this giant of the Philistines. He will give him great riches. He'll pay him. He'll give him his daughter to marry. So now he's in the family, the royal family. And because he's now in the royal family, his father's house will be exempt from paying taxes. Because a child of the king doesn't have to pay taxes. He's exempt from the taxes. Now, go back to Matthew 17. A king does not tax his own children. The children are exempt. And, and, and here's what Jesus is declaring here with this statement. He's declaring he's the son of God. And since he is the son of God, he is exempt from paying the temple tax. Again, the temple tax originated from Exodus chapter 30. And when you look back in Exodus chapter 30, you see that it says the tax was paid to the Lord. It's paid to Jehovah. It's paid to God for the upkeep of God's house. As the Son of God, Jesus Christ is therefore exempt because the sons are free. The sons of the king don't have to pay taxes. If you remember in John chapter 2, when Jesus cleared the temple of those who bought and sold items and the money changers, if you remember what Jesus said, he said, do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. He said, this is my father's house. He's the son of God. The temple is God's house. Therefore, he does not have to pay this temple tax. 